Thank you, Veronica. Morning, everyone. As Veronica said, I'm Ali Weiss. I am the Senior Vice President of Marketing at Glossier. For those of you who don't know us, Glossier is what we would define as the first customer-first beauty brand. Historically, a $445 billion beauty industry was founded and fueled by marketing that made customers feel like they weren't their own experts, that they constantly had to change their routines, and was really tops down in its approach. So when we founded our beauty blog into the gloss in 2010, and had the insight to build a product line on top of the people-fueled ecosystem that existed on Into the Gloss, we started flipping that industry on its head. So as many of you are here today to talk about, to learn, there, the, the state of marketing today is changing significantly. And as it changes, we really think about marketing today as the creation of experiences and how we create the most amazing and compelling and participatory experiences for our customers and bring them into that. So rather than thinking media first, product first, we're thinking experience first. And what does it mean to build a company around experiences? For us, we think a lot about the idea of what is a great experience to a customer. It's something that inspires a feeling, it fuels participation, and it creates connection. And traditionally, in beauty and a lot of the retail industry, most of marketing has been founded on the idea of selling product. And ultimately what we're doing here is we're not selling product. We are encouraging participation and connection within a set of holistic experiences that for us sits on three foundational elements. So the first is this idea of product. When we started Into the Gloss, we had this insight that people weren't coming to the blog just for the product recommendations. They were actually coming there to be inspired by the people that were talking about their beauty routines, that were opening up their bathrooms and their makeup bags to let us in. And on that insight, we realized that it wasn't product first, but people first. And we've been able to build a thir over 30, pro uh, 30 SKU product line built on the idea that we involve our customers and their experiences in the product creation and the way that we bring that to market. Second, we are digital first. Over 80% of our business is e-commerce, and we have started building out our brick and mortar presence. But what happened is we launched the brand on Instagram, and this was built on the insight, again, that people wanted to be inspired by other people, by opinions, by participation, by community and conversation, not by the ingredients or the claims about a product. And so as we built out our digital experiences, we're focusing on changing the way that people shop and discover beauty. And last, our offline experiences. These are really the pinnacle of the touch points for our customers, where they can interact in real life with the editors, our store associates, and with the community that makes up the Glossier brand. So from a product experience perspective, what we're aiming to do with our product line is in a very edited way, change the way people participate in beauty. We're incredibly thoughtful in how we develop our physical products and how we bring them to market. Rather than overloading and creating franchise after franchise and product line after product line, we're extraordinarily edited in the way we're curating both the skincare, makeup, body, and fragrance routines that we're offering our customers. And every single product and way we bring that to market and continue to talk about those products within the world of Glossier through our digital channels, through our offline channels, is really in partnership with our community. So a first example of that is a product that is called Solution. We launched Glossier Solution in January of 2018. Solution is actually a pretty niche category. It's a chemical exfoliator, something that requires education, buy-in, and validation from the community. It was built on the insight that this was a really important element of many people's routine that we discovered through conversations with our community. We've built things like a Slack group with 2,000 people in it where our community talks about different beauty products, a private Facebook group for our most engaged into the gloss readers where over 70% of them participate every day. And through those product insights, we're actually able to identify not white space in the broader beauty market, but white space and opportunities within real people's routines that give us the insight to develop this product. So when we were launching Solution, we knew that it was going to be something that was difficult to explain. And the wrong route for us to go would be to take the very traditional claims, ingredients approach that many, many beauty brands had taken before us. 
So what we did is we started the conversation through Into the Gloss with our customers, and we asked them questions about exfoliation. What, what role does exfoliation play in your routine? Ask us your questions that you have around chemical versus physical exfoliators, and really started to spark this participation. And once the formula was finalized, instead of us launching the product, we wanted our community to launch the product, to tell their stories, good, bad, inspiring, about their skin challenges, about their experience with the solution product. So we actually gave this product before launch to hundreds of members of our community, and 60 of them told the launch story with us. And you can see here uh, some of our tweets, some of the imagery. And the most amazing thing here is that while it's a very technical and chemical formula that we developed directly, so we weren't necessarily taking the community input in that part of the product process, Ultimately, the way we brought this to market was all through the customer experience, highlighting and heroing out the idea that our customers were experiencing the product. And this enabled this bottoms-up approach. And now it's one of our best skincare products in our portfolio. In addition, and this is a really, really fun one. I loved this idea because someone on our team, when we were launching mascara, recalled that it was our most requested product across our entire product line. And of course, mascara is um, a highly penetrated category. It's something that we had a gap in our portfolio when we first launched with our first four products. And over time, many, many of our customers firmly believed that we could make one of the best mascaras on the market. And so as we developed this mascara, which took over two years, we got a lot of input about what the Glossier mascara would be from our customers and our community. And over that period of time, we continued to track those hundreds and thousands of customers that requested the, the product from us. And what you see here is when we launched the product, we actually took each individualized comment, printed it on a postcard, and shipped each of the customers that requested that product, the product, and back with their comment that we heard them, which acknowledged their individual voice, something we believe strongly in and something we believe technology can continue to fuel at scale. We acknowledge their individual joy, uh, voice and also their choice to make this product with us. And it garnered an amazing groundswell of enthusiasm and excitement around the idea that we were launching this product. Next, we have our digital experiences. So this is something everyone in this room and across the industry is familiar with today. We all have to win at providing the best digital experiences. And through our digital experiences, because we started there first, we're really focused on changing how the world finds, learns about, and shops beauty. So the key thing here is it's not only the, the shopping of beauty, but the finding and learning about a beauty. And this is the magic here is how you enable commerce to intersect both with content and community. Because ultimately, the brand interest, the brand love, and the brand engagement for Glossier doesn't necessarily come through the shopping experience. It comes through how they are able to discover what they want about our community and about the brand through our digital experiences. And the magic behind digital is that we're able, in this changing landscape of marketing, to scale the one-to-one -one direct connection with the customer. So within Glossier, we have a team, the customer experience team, which many companies refer to as customer service. And we call them the G team. And the G team is really the heart and soul of Glossier. They are the ones who maintain and scale one-to-one -one relationships and have the utmost focus on the day-to-day -day customer experience with our brand. They handle all of the inbounds from tags on Instagram stories to questions about where their shipment is to what shade of cloud paint someone should buy to both brand love, brand questions, the entire spectrum. And what's really special about this is we have this editor base across the world that works remotely in order to scale these one-to-one -one relationships. And what's, what's really, really special about this model is that it sits within the marketing team. And in many companies, customer service teams sits within operations. And the main goal is to reduce the cost per contact or the number of contacts by optimizing the experience. And so we've flipped that on its head. 
while we still want it to be efficient and scalable, we're extraordinarily focused on giving our customers the best experience. Because ultimately, and in particular, when a customer has the outreach where they're spending the time to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, we want to meet you where you are. And the key thing is we built the infrastructure to truly meet our customers where they are. When someone DMs us on Instagram or tweets us, we respond to them directly through that channel. We have a mandate that we never switch channels, though the worst thing we can do is to send someone a message back and say, please email the G team at this email address. People are meeting us where they want to be, and so we've set up the entire team to deliver this really special and scalable one-to-one -one experience through our G team. This part's really fun. So from a digital experience perspective, it actually goes really far beyond Glossier.com, beyond our customer experience team, beyond the shopping, beyond into the gloss. Our digital experiences expand to community-inspired experiences. And we've seen this amazing traction among many members of our community who have built content that fuels our digital ecosystem and creates engagement far beyond the scope of whatever our marketing team could do on its own. And so I have some examples up here, which is, uh, Glossier Brown, an account dedicated to uh, women and people of color who use Glossier, building an entire community around that. This meme account called Glossier Sticker on a Lighter, you can see the Spice Girls meme created with the Spice Girls shopping the Glossier products and wearing the Glossier sweatshirt. And last but not least, almost 20,000 followers on account, an account called Dogs of Glossier. And it's worth noting that all of this is managed by community members, by people who are willing to do this in their spare time that feel like stakeholders in building the brand and building the digital experiences that we're providing to our community. And last, our offline experiences. So this is an area I'm extraordinarily passionate about. And I'm sure many of you in this room who work within businesses that are founded within the brick and mortar experience would say it's obvious, but as a digitally native company, it actually took us a while to figure out that we needed this pinnacle of in real life experience to engage our community and to draw in our customers. So with our offline experiences, we're aiming to change how the world shops for and experiences beauty in real life. If you think about the offline experience, traditional beauty offline experience today, that was really founded on this idea of a beauty counter. This idea that you would walk up and you would have this singular person that you interacted with, and they would make you feel like you didn't know what you were doing. They would tell you, you need to change this about your routine, this product will make your skin better, this will make you feel more beautiful, and you constantly feel like a beginner. And so one of, these one of our goals with these offline experiences is to embrace each individual as their own expert, as the own author of their beauty narrative. And for that reason, our team within our stores, both our flagships and our pop-ups, are called editors. We have this point of view that in this day and age, with the rise of social media, anyone can be an editor. Anyone can have a point of view on what the best products are, on what the routine can be. And given our editorial roots, we're able to embrace that and scale that through our editors that you can see here across all of our offline touch points. Today, we've experimented with two types of stores. We have two permanent locations, one in New York and Soho, and one in LA on Melrose Place. And we've also done a series of pop-ups. We'll do five large-scale pop-ups um, across the US and London uh, this year in 2019. So from a permanent store perspective, what we really are excited about is uh, this idea of engaging people and trapping them into a, a space where they feel like time can just go by. And if you've ever been to our store, and you can see it here without the community in it, without the people in it, it really feels like a jewel box, like an escape, where you can dive in not only to the products, but to the community and to conversation, and really engage with the brand. Our flagship in New York sees over 50,000 visitors a month, and our conversion rate is over 50% of people who visit. So it's a pretty Pretty incredible experience. If you've visited over the past few weeks, actually in the summer, we've had a line pretty much from opening at 11 a.m. till closing at 7, 7 p.m. every day. And that's something that we love because we're so excited that people are drawn to this experience, that it's the pinnacle of the way that they are embracing what we do at Glossier. At the same time, we want everyone to feel like they can be part of it. So the challenge with lines is people have to wait there. They have to be willing to participate. They have to be willing to wait, wait their turn. And so we've um, 
launched this entire idea of line engagement, where our editors actually um, enable people to begin experiencing the brand while they're waiting in line, while they're um, waiting to go up our, our staircase to our second floor flagship in New York. And then these pop-up experiences have been extraordinarily special. So we started these actually um, with our showroom in New York when we launched in the penthouse, the sixth floor, um, about 300 square feet area of our office. And we thought, what if we just pop up in real life and make it feel really intimate, really localized, true to the culture of where we're showing up within our office, um, with people who are part of the brand. And since then, the idea has exploded. We've brought these extraordinarily localized experiences to cities across the US, and it's something we expect to continue to do for a really long time. And to the point that experiences are at the heart of marketing, Ultimately, these are really marketing tools. They're 360 degree marketing tools where we're able to engage people in our products, in our digital experience, in our offline experience, and in a representation of the brand that represents, uh, what, represents what they want, how they want Glossier to show up in their community. So the top picture is of our Seattle store, which just closed. It was in Capitol Hill. And what we really did there is we embraced the landscape of Seattle, the natural greenery. It was beautiful. We had thousands of living plants in the store that actually then got repurposed and donated to the city parks. Um, and it was just this amazing experience. And I have committed to working the first day. I put on the pink jumpsuit. I worked the first day in every single one of our pop-ups. And every time, I'm reminded by the gaping mouths that walk in how special this customer experience is and what a powerful tool it is to create a connection between the brand and the consumer. And then the other pictures of our, our pop-up in Miami, which was in Wynwood, where what we did is we took uh, this idea where we were, local, we were localized in a um, very modern neighborhood of Miami. We took the traditional Art Deco idea of what Miami stood for and flipped that inside out, put that on the inside of the store. And we launched with Miami this idea of localized merch. So you can see this experience, this in real life product experience that's not even a beauty product, but actually people were putting these Miami keychains on um, Depop on eBay for four times the price because people were so crazy about this limited edition experience, which is something that you wouldn't expect through sort of like a, a fruit donned keychain uh, in the experience, but it was an element and a touch point of the brand that was shareable and interesting and exciting for people across our community. So none of these touch points live in isolation. Uh, the product idea, the digital idea, and the offline idea. Together, we think about them as cohesive touch points. And we've designed our team and our operations and the way we bring experiences to life at Glossier to really deliver experience first, and then think about all of the channels through which we talk about that experience as second. When we inspire feelings through these experiences, when we create participation and the ability for our customers to connect, we end up being able to fuel growth. And that growth results not only in dollars, it results in hearts and this brand love that creates a vibrant and diverse community of people who truly feel because they've experienced something that is created specifically for them, like a stakeholder in our brand. So that's why we and I believe at Glossier that marketing is now about the creation of experiences for our customers and our community. Thank you.